deck he wants to use right now. He is gonna go for the Skunk. The skunk deck, I think it's Skunk Wolf. Yes, it is. The AoE coverage deck. Both sides with the Skunk power. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the grand finals of the January campaign double deck tournament. Bray Post in the blue from the winner's side and from the loser's side, Chip from Space in the green to the north. Let's get going, guys. This is going to be the match of the week. And right now, both sides. So, you're looking at the decks right now, and you're seeing a lot of AoE coverage here for both sides. What's going to be the strong point of either deck? In the, the where they differ is where I look first. <laughs> Repost so, has Lizard, so he has a chance to attack early. But Chip does not, and Repos also has Owl, which Chip does not, so that also, like, late, super late game, Repos has an advantage if he keeps the AoE up, but Chip, I think, has the ability to control the mid game with the Ferret, Scott, or the Ferret and Wolf, if he uses those correctly, whereas Owl is good at any time. I feel like it will start to really become a problem late game when you get two of them out or something ridiculous. Repos is waiting. Okay, so he's just waiting for some more food to put down the double warrens. There it is. Popping it down right now, Chip. Also going to put a second warren down as well on the high ground. So both sides just gearing up their army for some initial skirmishes if need be. Now, if we're going to talk about taking advantage of the mid game, I want to talk about that mill in the middle of the map here on the high ground. That is a very key mill here for this map. Just this, this high ground in general just by, is, really, is important. I have trouble seeing Repos be able to secure that. That's from the the open things to where you come in with your units to reinforce it, and also Chip having a ferret that close is makes it. I don't think Repos will be. Buying that mill soon, or in keeping it for long. Right now, Chip from Space building up a squirrel army here for himself. Repos diversifying into both lizards and squirrels here for himself. Right now, just waiting for a good opportunity to initiate an attack. Both sides are playing this one very patiently. Chip from space, he is going to be grabbing his first Toad Warren, though, on the field. And Repos, ooh! That sneaky, sneaky Owl Warren in the back. He should expand so it doesn't look that odd. I know, right? But he, he's waiting. Oh, if Chip reads this one, he can actually storm on, he needs to storm on in right now. If he can get a read on the number of units that Repost has. But Repost, he's keeping his units up at the front line, trying to prevent Chip from actually scouting the back of his map. And Chip will have to go away. So Repost will have the time to build that Owl War, and it's almost done. Just a few more seconds before the unit can set Chip is busy. expanding. Oh, Chip. Yes, be very careful. Luckily... He has high ground, so if they ever attack from below, he can always try to leverage that high ground to do to attack on forward. Oh, Repos trying to expand, trying to trick Chip, but Chip nowhere in the area to really scout that quite yet. And now the owl mill is done, the owl is building. Will Chip be able to find this one out? He's looking around here, looking for anything tricky that Repos is doing, but he's not it's not there. The owl is too far away for him to look at. He even has a balloon up, so that's Oh, he sells off the balloon. Gonna put down some more units on the field right there. Just to beef up his giant army here in Repost. Oh, he's gonna try to play this one one. Chip is gonna be the first one to attack. attack. Now. He's, well, he's not trying to, he's trying to move his units forward. Just trying to get some um, map advantage here. Just be a little bit careful though, because that owl is now finished building and it is online and ready to go. Chip. Does not know he's attacking too quiet. Now he knows the owl is in full view, and Chip throws away all of his toads and runs away quickly as the mice are now chasing after his squirrels. Doing his best to run away from the mice pressure here. The ferret is also online now, though. So both sides taking scraps and pieces of each other, although Breed Post is now pulling on ahead in terms of army valley just because of that owl there. 
And he's also building up a massive scroll army. And right now, here he goes once again. The Mice just pushing Chip away from the backside. And they're just digging into the squirrel line, what piece by piece. And the massive squirrel numbers are just taking away everything else. Chip salvages his ferrets, though, but he's trying to do his best to get them away from the front lines. He's trying to get them away. The owl pops. The owl pops. There's so much many mice in the field. He doesn't have the control. He has nothing to stop the mice. That's game. Pre-post with an early sneaky owl will take the match against Chip. What a game. That was a good map for a sneaky owl. It was a perfect position to put that warrant into. And unfortunately, Chip decided to go ferret instead of skunk. So if maybe if he had skunk, it could probably help control the mice a little bit. Skunk or if he... Instead of expanding, went for wolf. <laughs> but he didn't read that. He thought that brief post was playing a standard game. Yeah, okay, you have to read it, which is very tricky. Yeah, I mean that map especially helped brief post so much there. So Chip gonna have to take a loss in this one. And brief post is now one game away from claiming victory, claiming the championship of this tournament. And Chip, he needs to fight back. He needs to win this this next game at least to make it even, and to throw brief post off. At the very least, he won't have his owl this time. So Chip doesn't have to worry about it here. He has the advantage of knowing exactly what deck he's playing against. Mm -hmm. He's going to be sticking with... He's going to go with his other deck this time, going for the Fox and Ferret deck. So this is pretty much almost a mirror match in a way. I guess... No, not really. I shouldn't say that. Three of the units are the same. The other three are not. Four of the units are the same. I can't count anymore. Help me. You take it's it. Fun. You take it's it surprising how <laughs> how frequently the the decks have been so similar, but that's also just a math fact of how I, of the statistics. If you choose completely randomly, I don't think it I feel like they would be very similar given the stipulations. <laughs> There's a, look at this. There's no secret area that Chip has this time. Repos I was to be able to scout it out. So, that one one block of passage in the backside. I'm not sure yeah. if you can use it for anything, but that's something to think about. Repost doesn't have Falcons to be able to harass that. No. Like, that's the only unit that can really threaten that base right now. I mean, Chip does, Look. his composition does allow him to get that range advantage with the Falcon, Ferret, and Fox if he ever gets them out. Yeah. Now the question is, will he be able to handle the lizard squirrel combination that Repost will be putting out? I think Chip is. If it cuts to a second base, Chip will not have a safe one. Because the the island base is, you, there's no way for you to really defend that. And there's no real room for you to build either. It's just all over the water. Chip's almost out of warrants he can place. Is maybe two more. Yep, he's going to be forced to expand right now, trying to find a good place. It's not—it's not the end of the world. He does have a lot of food going his way, so it's—it's a, yeah. it's a pretty standard time to actually go for an expansion, really. And also means yeah. he won't be in danger of starving, but it does mean he has to defend them hard. It is unusual for the players we've or for from for Chip to be expanding this soon, however. I don't think it's his comfort zone. I mean, he does have some things to defend. He's going to try to build his warrants up far forward there. He's trying to defend as quickly as possible. He already gathered his lizards here for reinforcement as well. His lizards are fa fast little units there, so they're pretty fast to um, reinforce. He's going for a sneaky tier 3 again. Uh, repost. I'm trying to take advantage of this. Although, against a massive lizard army, let's see how it goes. He's going to have to get, make sure that... Chip doesn't have the lizard army to chase away the fox. But yeah, that fox is going to be a danger to Chip. And he has to be very aware at this time. He needs to, he needs to like, know how many units that Repost is currently building. But that requires some godly scouting ability. Although, no, he can't get from the back either. It's blocked off. So yeah. You almost have to... Like, the only solution is to be proactive yourself and... 
Yeah. Place a fox of your own, but he expanded, so it's not r really possible. Oh, right now, Briefos can get his first expansion there. Very nice, easy expansion. He, if he gets ferrets or falcons, he can start poking. Which he's not putting into. But both of those units are bad against fox. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think Chip is doing the wrong thing. I mean, he's building a giant tier one army. He's building a lot of toads, which are expendable units, anyways. So if he can use that to block fox shots, that's actually a pretty nice thing to have. The only thing is, he still needs to deal with the tier one army that Briefos is currently building up. So he needs to maneuver around them very well. Yeah, he tries to sneak in the back, but there's no room there. And the fox is now online, popped open to say hello to the world. Time to rest down some varmint. There he goes. Bree posting the fox. Oh, is he? The wave. Oh, he's trying to. He's trying to go for it. I may but not no. have been the best oh, place to sneak it through. Oh, he's trying to take the farms, but he approached in the wrong direction. So the, this is the nice thing about Chip's position. And now he's going to put up the structures now. So the fox can't attack into it. So the one downside of fox is that it can't do anything in its defensive structures. And right now, here we go. Trying to snipe some pigs. It, it's not close it enough. To There's too many Tar units to target. <laughs> if it had to target defensive structures, then it wouldn't have been able to do any damage economically. So like that disadvantage is also an advantage. Right, and the best that Repost can do is just chip away with his fox, but the fox cannot do any terrible damage quite yet. Chip is going to start to get the ferret now. The ferret is in the middle of the field, but is surrounded by units, so no way for the fox to target it yet. And that machine gun nest is making sure that he can't approach. Repost is forced to get his army up forward here. Here we go, we could have an engagement on our hands right now! The machine gun is making its way forward as a legend army approaching first! Trying to get the distraction, the targeting. There it is! The fox is down for the ex toad explosion! And now Briefos is losing too many units to the explosions now! The fans are poking in from the backside, and the lizards are cleaning up the rest! Briefos has lost everything! But he has high ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. He lost all his farms at first base. Oh, he's, he's, farms. he's also. He has plenty of farm, but he's like super supply blocked now. He is not going to get that fox up anytime soon. Chip can now sit back and relax. He can try to tech up. He's going to go some more structures, it looks like. Just getting him some more units on the field, trying to get his units back and reinforce. He's going to use his ferrets to now poke away at Bree Post. And that fox got sold off. It became dead weight for Bree Post, and he wasn't able to accomplish much with it. No? I Chip. feel like it got caught its value in shots. Or close to. The trouble is just the time investment. Right now, repost. He's gonna just build a ton of squirrels. Look at that army. He's building up to 30 squirrels right now. And that just outnumbers anything that Chip has. Although he has to wait for the squirrels to start building. But again, if the lizard can distract our tank enough. They can actually distract the squirrel targeting and allow the toads to get in some good explosions like last time. And there are not that many lizards that Briefos has to really defend against toads. So Briefos has to play this one real smart. Briefos is have... out of. Oh, he's okay. trying to go for it. He's trying to go for it right now. The lizard army is going to be slowly crushed in bits and pieces, but the squirrel army is now crushing its way on forward. But the toad army is sneaking its way through. It has some explosions poking its way through to the squirrel army, but it's not quite enough yet. The squirrel army is still strong in numbers, starting to chip away at Chip's units here. Chip has to be very careful, he doesn't have that many units to defend at the moment. His units are now reinforced and the explosions do go off here. But he's losing too many warrens right now as Briefos is slowly marching down his way with a giant ball of squirrels here. But the Toads, they're actually getting their damage in right now and Briefos is losing his squirrels! The Chip managed to hold! A, a surprising amount of damage. Oh, Briefos has to be very careful now. As... He still has more farm than Chip, so that's a good thing. He was able to snipe a farm there a little bit earlier, but now there's lizards slowly make their way forward. The ferrets also trying to get some shots in the, on the squirrels. And Briefos trying to do his best. He sold off all of his lizards right there to get some extra in cash, some extra cash flow here for himself. But right now, the lizard reinforcers are coming in from the backside, trying to chip away at Briefos. Briefos still continuing on for his squirrel army is again growing in number 16 squirrels versus three lizards and two ferrets. The ferrets try and do their best to tank all these shots. Trying to take as many as they can. The squirrels doing their damage here. And they're still pressing on forward. There's so many squirrels coming in. 
And right now, Chip doing his best trying to defend. This is tournament life on the line right now. Bripos is still pushing on forward with the squirrels right now. There's just a steady stream of squirrels making their way forward. And Chip, he might actually starve because of this. The mill is gonna be very is gonna be taken down very quickly by Bripos, and Bripos is just pushing him into a corner right now. There's no way out of there. Or he has to go. There are too the many squirrels in this house. Oh, he hasn't killed off the milk quite yet. He just needs a few more pokes that he sells off the ferrets, but for what? He has no farm. He is starving right now. He has 60 seconds to do He's something. He's trapped up there. Oh, it, it looks so good for Chip. It looks so good for him, but then Brinkpost just immediately sold everything and got a ton of squirrels. And Chip did not have enough control against them. And now he's trying to yep. slowly starve out Chip. Chip has about 40 food in the bank. I don't think there's much that he can do right now. He's gonna do his best. He's trying to go for. He's trying to go for a base race here. I think the pigs uh, no, are no, I think he's, no, he's giving up. He's giving yeah. up. <laughs> here you have it, folks. You're a champion here of the d double deck tournament. Repost slowly to be crowned king. Just about 15 more seconds until that happens. But what a game! Repost going for two sticky tier threes. And then massing up with his farm count. Chip did his best, but it wasn't enough here. And there you have it. Your champion for the first January campaign tournament will be Brepost. Great games. Well played by Brepost. <laughs> that was... I think that... That foresight to just change his build completely into only squirrels just... That is some great foresight coming out from Brepos. Great, adapt great adaptation from him. And he has proven himself as a worthy champion. As he will now be claimed the victor here. Let's see if we can get him on the stream. Let me just add a roll to him. Just waiting for him to come online here. Almost I'm gonna update this bracket here. Oh, we can come here. Hello. Hello, Bray Post. How are you? How, how do you feel being the champion of the double deck tournament? I feel really great actually, especially since she kept uh, rolling over me the entire week. All right, so. What, what was your thoughts going into this deck? Like, how did you decide what decks to bring into battle with you? Uh, sorry, I was I had the stream uh, in double sound, so I didn't I hear it. I'm sorry. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I did. So, you know, your your decks. How, how did you think about bringing your decks into the battle here? Like, what were you thinking about when you um, built your decks up for this tournament? So, since the uh, uh, bulk of your army is a square of lizards in like 89% of the game, 99%. Um, I thought the units I would uh, get in both decks were, would be both lizards and squirrels so that I can adapt more. And then I found two builds that I was pretty uh, happy about. Uh, is every time at tier 3 uh, so that I can cheese a bit and or follow late games and some defenses and stuff. So I was pretty happy with both my builds, and uh, then I played the entire week, and uh, I saw the uh, Lizard Heavy meta, and my Fox Speed actually didn't uh, perform well at all uh, against this uh, kind of plays, so... I wasn't so happy uh, about that, but... <laughs> eventually it worked out. Well, you went the whole tournament without losing one match. Or one set, or one game of any set. I think I feel like I was pretty lucky in some games. Like this uh, last game, I was really behind, I guess. But yeah, the lizards uh, went a long way. He missed micro in the last fight. Otherwise, I would have a uh, hard time to get my third expansion. What are your thoughts about this format in general? That it's your first time having this format. What do you think? I really like it, actually. 
I, I, I really like that you have to make some choices and you can't play the, the same thing in every game. So I really like the format. Uh, although, yeah, maybe at the moment it's a bit uh, too tier 1 heavy. So. I mean, Do you think that's just be is that because of the format or because of the current balance? <laughs> One of the harder questions to answer. I think it's pro it's probably more a question of balance than format. That yeah, I think it should, especially in this format we should be seeing some plays, some awkward plays, uh, stuff we never see, like the mind play Bexidu, which I thought excellent against Bloodia. All right and. This is this is your second tournament. The first tournament you've entered was the doubles tournament here. Um, yes. For this one, what do you think were the, your toughest opponents to face? Uh, I think Zinu is a really good player, but uh, his decks on this tournament uh, didn't scare me all that much. Uh, Chip's deck, however, uh, kind of scared me because in the long game. Uh, if he goes with his uh, squirrel bridge, he has the fox, uh, which uh, the wolf, which is uh, really really stronger than my fox, for example, or even than my than the olds. And his lizard play really scared me, so uh, I, I was actually scared of Chip the most. Right. It turned out to be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you faced him twice, both in the winners' finals and in grand finals. Luckily, you were able to get both wins wins over him so congratulations once again repost and um, on behalf of Clash of Comrades I hope that you will come to have more tournaments for those watching we still have more January campaign this entire month every single week is a different tournament next week is going to be the standard tournament for all those who just got their keys make sure you guys sign up and show what you can do most of these players that entered this tournament were all pretty much brand new and they've just shown us some amazing stuff so we want to see what kind of stuff that you guys can bring to the table and how you guys can challenge the veterans of this game and once again thank you very much Brepost, for joining us here and congratulations you. once again for taking the championship of the double deck tournament and thank you for casting and thank you very much thank you very much with me valently as well thank you for joining me today it was just us two for the time being and it looks like unfortunately i won't be here next for the next two weeks so that will be handled by some other clash of comrades members so give them their give them the love that they need to all right any last words valently uh, no just wonder uh, saw great plays from everyone today and <laughs> hope we continue to in the weeks to come all right, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you follow Clash of Comrades both on our Twitch channel and on Twitter at Clash of Comrades. You can also follow me and my shenanigans. I am at twitter.com slash bestteammaker, twitch.com slash bestteammaker. Go ahead and follow all of us here. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. We will see you guys next week. takes out the snake war so no more snakes and they go all oh, the scrolls are gone Zeno's gone uh, no more army no more owls he only has three scrolls what's the team roller just so you now see how this goes you can get there goes oh, it classic metal counter snipes it's in them too and now they're getting nailed down here they're even walking through the gas it's too late Devils has the superior numbers at this moment he's gonna mow down Zeno's wards GG champion for